Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. Now, I finally realised that the majority of gigs that I'm personally going to be doing are going to be silent stages. Recently, I bought a Kemper and I've really been impressed by how much the Kemper has come on since its early days. It sounds great because you can profile your amp. But the only thing that I think the Kemper is lacking is when you put a pedal board in front of it. Now, when I go out and do a gig, I like to use effects pedals. I like to have compressors, distortions, overdrives, delays, that sort of stuff. And I'd like to be able to use that with the Kemper. Now the Kemper copes with pedals okay, and I've recently profiled my matchless amplifier over there. And the profile on the Kemper is really, really good. It sounds great. But when I put pedals in front of it, the pedals don't react in the same way as if I put them into the front of the amp. Now to me, that is a problem. The Kemper is a really great studio tool, but for live when I want to use external pedals and be changing the controls on those pedals, it's not going to be ideal. So what I thought I'd do, over the weekend is to get one of these. If you don't know what this is, this is a Fractal Audio Axe FX3. A lot of the bigger bands nowadays, if they're using a silent stage, tend to be using these Axe FX3s. And I wanted to see what all the hype was about. Now this turned up on Saturday. I've spent about an hour, an hour and a half with it. But what I'd like to do today is to see how easy it is to create some basic patches just without really knowing what you're doing with the XFX3. Now I've looked at the front panel of the XFX3 and to be honest, it is complicated, but luckily they do an XEdit, which is a computer-based editing software for the XFX. And that's what I'm gonna be using today. So as you can see from the screen, we've got a ton of blocks here, which we can load in each one of these blocks, amplifiers, effects, all that sort of stuff. So let's start from the first block and I'm gonna right click on that block and I'm gonna choose an input. Now my guitar is plugged into input one and I'm gonna stay on the same line, but I'm gonna go over to the last block, right click and choose an output, choose output one. It does things in a slightly strange way because to me, that should automatically connect up, but it doesn't, or as far as I found out, it doesn't. I'm sure that all the people here that are watching this video that know the Axe FX are gonna say, oh, you're doing it all wrong. But anyway, this is the way that I'm doing it. And then I can click on the output of the input and then join it up with the output. So you can think of this like a virtual pedal board where cables are going from one end of the signal chain to the other. With the input plugged into the output, I've got my DI sound. So let's load in an amp. And as you can see, it's loaded up this dirty Shirley amp. If I click here, we can choose between all these different amps. And you're gonna see from this video, there's quite a lot of stuff that you can load in. And you possibly could get to the point of option paralysis, but I'm just gonna keep it on the amp that it's loaded up, which I think was probably the last amp that I used. And then we need to load up a cab block. So let's load up cab one. So straight off the bat, it sounds like this. Already a great tone, I haven't adjusted anything. Now, what I can do is I can load in some different cabs. Now, all of these here are different IRs, and to be honest, it's so overwhelming. Now what you could do, you can click on this little pin up here and you can go and choose. And go through and choose the actual speaker that you want. And to be honest, all of them sound good. But this is my problem with modelers because you've got so much choice and you're gonna be spending more time trying to choose the right speaker combination than actually playing or creating a tone. So. What I've done, if I go over here, as you can see this, it seems like there's thousands. Now there was one that I found, is it that one? Which is a, a nice sort of four by 12 with a 57. And again, that does sound really good. 72% of the people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribers. If you're not a subscriber and you get something out of these videos, please subscribe, it really helps me and you guys will be notified whenever a new video comes out. Right, back to the video. I'm not gonna get too much into this channel feature here. Basically, all of the effects and the amps, anything you load up has four channels and you can load different 
items into those channels. So if you're in the amp block, you can load four different amps into those channels and then create scenes where you're switching between those different amplifiers. And it's really powerful and it sounds absolutely incredible. But for today's video, I'm just gonna be creating a basic sound, possibly with a clean amp and a dirty amp. So we've got an amp and a cab. At the end, I'm gonna put a reverb. And let's choose a large hall. Now something that I will say, the reverbs and the delays in the Axe FX are absolutely off the chart. Definitely the best quality effects that I've heard in a modeler. So here's the reverb. Now that's a little bit too much, let's bring that down to about two seconds. And maybe just give it a tiny bit of pre-delay. Let's load in a delay. So let's right click on the block before and let's choose delay. Let's change the type. And let's choose this ambient stereo delay. Now, I always tend to use 400 millisecond delays. So let's bring it down to 400. And let's bring the left right time ratio down, which is gonna create more of a ping pong. And just bring the mix back just so it's just in the background. So there we go, a really nice sort of basic tone. Now, another thing I'll say about the Axe FX, it feels like you're playing through an amp. The response is immediate. It feels really, really good. There are some modelers out there that I've done reviews on that don't quite sort of feel like you're playing through an amp. This feels really good. Like the Boss stuff as well. The Boss stuff sort of feels like that. It's immediate, feels really good. So there's my basic tone. Now, if you find some cabs that you really like, you can store them in a block. So if I click on library here and I choose TSR1, this is a cab block that I set up. Now I'm using three different IRs for this, but. So let's go with that. Now I'm not gonna be using any external pedals at the moment. I'm just gonna be using all of the effects that are built into the Axe effects. So let's right click before the amp and let's load in a drive. So instantly it comes up with this BB preamp. Now I've got a BB preamp and it does actually sound like that. And I'll tell you what I can even do. I can mute that drive and switch in my BB preamp. So there's a real pedal. Now my gain's up a little bit. Switch that in. So it does actually sound like the pedal that it's emulating. Right, I'm gonna click here, but I'm gonna change it to, and let's choose Tone of Kings, which is gonna be like a King of Tone style pedal. Let's give it a bit more level gain to the front of the amp. That sounds great. So there's my rhythm overdrive tone. 
Let's see how it copes with a more clean tone. Let's turn the drive off. Let's go back into the amp. Now I'm gonna to go to channel B. I'm gonna load in a completely different amp into channel B. So let's go all the way over. I mean, again, there's so much choice. Uh, and let's choose the, uh, the Tremolo Lux. It does sound really, really good. Now, if I bring the drive pedal in front of that, The amplifier is reacting differently, which again is really valve amp like. Really good. Let's mute that drive pedal. And what I'm going to do is to load in a tremolo. Let's load it in afterwards. The thing that I really like about this is that immediately when you choose an effect, you get a really usable sound. You don't have to tweak that much. So it might be a little bit too much. Let's bring the depth back. And let's change the reverb. So I'm gonna click on my reverb. Let's go to channel B. So let's choose one of their more sort of shimmer style reverbs. Let's try this one. And that's what I mean about these reverbs. They're really good. Bring that drive in. Really, really good effects. Now lastly, I'll just show you something that I found just before I, I was gonna shoot the video. Um, if I load in a looper into another block, if I can find it, there it is. So I can record the loop. Now that I've captured that loop, it's really nice because you've got this visual representation on the screen. And I'm gonna trim the start because I want the loop to be in time. Now what I could have done, I could have set up a whole scene so I could switch to the next scene and then completely change the sound or go back to the original sound, but I didn't do that. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my amp and change it back to the Dirty Shirley that I created at the beginning and go to my reverb and go to my large hall. Now I'm gonna save that as scene number one. Then I'm gonna to go to scene number two and on scene number two, I'm gonna have the Tremolux with the sort of shimmer style reverb. So scene number two. And then scene number one. I've got the Dirty Shirley with the smaller reverb. Go back into my looper. So there you go, there's a real sort of basic sound, but you can hear the quality of the effects that you can get from the Axe effects. It's really impressive. And 
I guess it's only going to get better the more and more that I get into it. Now, again, I've tried it out with pedals. I'll do a separate video about all of this, but I've tried it out with pedals. It handles pedals really, really well. It sounds like the pedal going into an amp as opposed to the Kemper, which to be honest, doesn't really sound like that. It sort of sounds like a sort of emulation of a pedal going into an amp. So I'm really pleased with that. Now, if you want to see more videos on the Axe Effects, let me know the sort of things that you want to see and I'll, I'll get working on them. I really hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.